Hello, good morning students. You are still with me, Coach Ahmad Riwayati. We are still in the same program, English for Grade 12. Well, students, let's see these pictures. This is uh, your friends, uh, students from many different countries. Great Britain, Australia, Vietnam, United States, Indonesia, Malaysia, and Singapore. They put on different uniforms. Well, the question is, is it required or not? Of course, someone will agree with this idea and someone will oppose this idea because this is still a controversy whether school uniforms is required or not. Now, let's come to the paragraph. Okay, let's start discussing the first paragraph. And remember, some words or phrases in blue are the subject, and the ones in red are the predicate. Now let's discuss sentence by sentence. Let's read together. Traditionally, favored by private and parochial institution, school uniforms are being adopted by U.S. public schools in increasing numbers. Kalau dulunya hanya diterapkan oleh institusi-institusi swasta dan di bawah gereja, seragam sekolah sekarang telah diberlakukan oleh sekolah-sekolah negeri di Amerika dalam jumlah yang terus meningkat. Almost one in five U.S. public schools hampir Satu dalam lima, maksudnya seperlima sekolah-sekolah negeri di Amerika required students to wear uniform, mensyaratkan, mewajibkan siswanya untuk memakai seragam during the 2011-2012 school years dalam kurun waktu tahun ajaran 2011-2012. Up from one in eight in 2003-2004. Mengalami peningkatan dari seper delapan atau satu di antara delapan pada tahun ajaran 2003-2004. Mandatory uniform policies in public school. Kewajiban, uh, maaf, kebijakan mewajibkan seragam in public school di sekolah negeri are found more commonly in high poverty areas. Lebih banyak dijumpai di kawasan-kawasan yang miskin. Well, the idea is very clear. Yeah, what we are going to talk about this morning. Okay, let's continue to the second paragraph. Proponents say that Orang-orang yang mendukung kebijakan tersebut mengatakan bahwa school uniform seragam sekolah make school safer for student, menjadikan sekolah lebih aman bagi para siswa, create a level playing field, menciptakan kesetaraan that reduces socio-economic disparities, yang mengurangi kesenjangan sosial ekonomi, and encourage children to focus on their studies dan mendorong para siswa atau anak-anak untuk fokus pada belajarnya rather than their clothes daripada pada pakaiannya. Uh, jadi di paragraf kedua ini adalah sejumlah pihak yang mendukung. Ya, yang mendukung pentingnya memakai seragam sekolah. Nah, pasti juga ada yang tidak setuju. Let's continue to the next paragraph. Okay, let's continue to the last paragraph. Let's read together. Opponents say, orang-orang yang menentang kekasan ini mengatakan, school uniform seragam sekolah in French melanggar upon student right hak para siswa to express their individuality untuk mengekspresikan hal-hal yang sifatnya pribadi mereka. Alasan satu, alasan yang kedua, have no positive effect on behavior, tidak memiliki dampak positif terhadap tingkah laku 
and academic achievement tidak memiliki dampak positif terhadap pencapaian prestasi akademik. And emphasize the socioeconomic disparities that are intended to disguise. Dan menekankan atau menampakkan kesenjangan sosial ekonomi yang sebenarnya ingin mereka tutupi. Nah, dari paragraf 1, 2, dan 3, kita paham bahwa ada pihak yang setuju dengan seragam sekolah dengan berbagai alasannya. Dan ada pihak yang tidak setuju dengan seragam sekolah juga dengan beberapa alasannya. Oke? Okay? Let's continue to the next part. Question and answer. Okay, let's go to question number one. Question number one. The passage mainly discusses A. Which institution adopts school uniforms? B. How many schools require students to wear uniform? C. If students should wear school uniforms? D. Who claims school uniforms make schools safer for students? E. Whether public sports school uniforms or not? Well, to answer this question, we have to analyze the question itself and also the option, sentence by sentence or option by option. Okay, let's see the question. The passage mainly discusses, uh, this question is similar to the question in exercise one. Mirip dengan pelajaran sebelumnya. So, this type of question is asking about the theme or the topic of the passage. Menanyakan tema atau topik bacaan. A. Which institution adopts school uniforms? This is main idea of paragraph one, not the topic of the passage. B. How many schools require students to wear uniforms? This is spotting details in paragraph one, not the topic of the passage. C. If students should wear school uniforms, this is the relationship between main ideas of paragraph 1, 2, and 3. D. Who claims school uniforms make school safer for students? This is main idea of paragraph 2 or the idea of the proponents. E. Whether public sports school uniforms or not, it doesn't say at all in the paragraph. So, from these options, we know the answers now that the correct option is option C, if students should wear school uniforms, because option C is the relationship between main ideas of uh, paragraph 1, 2, and 3. In other words, this is the topic or the theme of the passage. Okay, let's go to question number two. Where are mandatory uniform policies are commonly found? A. In poor regions, B. In high class societies, C. In areas where rich people reside, D. In elite housing complex, E. In wealthy regions. Before we answer the questions, we have to analyze the question itself and the option A, B, C, D, and E. Question number two. Where are mandatory uniform policies more commonly found? Di mana kebijakan mewajibkan seragam ini kebanyakan dijumpai? Nah, tadi sudah jelas di bacaan tadi ya. A. In poor regions, di kawasan miskin. B. In high class societies, di kawasan uh, masyarakat kelas atas. C. In areas where rich people reside, di kawasan di mana orang-orang kaya tinggal. D. In elite housing complex. Di kawasan perumahan elit. E. In wealthy regions. Di kawasan-kawasan yang kaya atau makmur. Nah, dari opsi seperti ini sebenarnya sangat mudah kita untuk menjawab. Karena apa? Opsi B, C, D, dan E itu pada dasarnya adalah bermakna sama. So, the correct answer for this question is option A. In poor regions. Di kawasan miskin. Loh, kok bisa? Nah, tadi... Ini merupakan spotting details paragraph 1. Tapi dia tidak mengatakan in poor regions. Tapi sinonimnya. Atau frasa yang sama maknanya. Yaitu high poverty areas. High poverty areas means kawasan yang sangat miskin. Let's go to question number 3. 
It is inferred in the passage that the number of schools adopting uniform is A. Declining B. Decreasing C. Going down D. Reducing E. Going up To answer this question, we have to analyze the question itself and the option, of course. Okay, let's answer question number three. It is inferred in the passage uh, tersirat di dalam bacaan that the number of schools adopting uniform bahwa jumlah sekolah yang menerapkan seragam sekolah titik-titik A. Declining. Kita harus tahu arti declining. Declining itu artinya menurun. B. Decreasing. Ini juga sinonimnya. Artinya menurun. C. Going down. Ini artinya sama juga. Menurun. D. Reducing. Berkurang atau menurun. Jadi, yang A, B, C, dan D. Ini adalah sinonim. Artinya sama. Menurun. Kita bisa menerka pasti jawabannya adalah E. Going up. Ya, bertambah atau naik. Cuma, kata-kata going up tidak ditemukan di dalam bacaan. Yaitu apa? Yang ditemukan dalam bacaan? Yes, increasing in numbers. Senantiasa bertambah jumlahnya. That is supporting detail in paragraph one. So the correct answer for question number three is option E. Let's go to question number four. Question number four. Let's read it. Traditionally favored by private and parochial institution, school uniforms, blah 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 blah. The underlying words means. A. Autonomous B. Independent C. Related with church D. Self-finance E. Related with government To answer this question correctly, we have to understand the question itself and the options word by word because this is vocabulary test. Okay, let's continue to question number four. Traditionally favored by private and parochial institution. Kalau dulunya hanya diberlakukan oleh institusi-institusi swasta dan gereja, school uniform, seragam sekolah, bla bla bla. The underlying words, maksudnya ada parochial, means artinya A. Autonomous. Autonomous means self-governing. Artinya bersifat otonomi. B. Independent. The synonym is free. Independence means free. Merdeka atau mandiri atau berdikari. C. Related with church. Berkaitan dengan gereja. D. Self-finance. Mandiri di bidang keuangan. E. Related with government. Berkaitan dengan pemerintah or governmental. Nah, to answer this question, of course, we have to see from the context. If we don't understand, we have to look up in the dictionary. Jadi kalau menjawab pertanyaan semacam ini, kalau memang nggak tahu artinya, ya harus buka kamus. ya Kecuali pada waktu tes, dan tidak boleh buka kamus. Pada waktu latihan semacam ini, we have to look up our dictionary. Nah, dari kamus kita paham bahwa yang dimaksud parokil, sebagaimana dibahas pada uh, sesi uh, kosa kata, artinya adalah related with church. Berkaitan dengan gereja. So, students, we have answered all the four questions correctly. Finally, I would like to say thank you very much for joining my class. Bye-bye.